Let's talk about how to get rid of plantar fasciitis and to do it instantly. The problem with this condition is the treatments that people go through. They put you on pain medications, steroids, which have massive side effects. They do needle injections. Then you do orthotics. I mean, here's the thing. I had flat feet. Um, so I was raised on orthotics. Every different orthotic, I had it. It never helped. Let's take a mold of your flat foot. And then so you can walk on your flat foot. And it wasn't until I got rid of my orthotics that I started getting relief in my feet. Then you have splinting at night, holding your foot in a certain position through the night. And there's also botulism toxin injections. And if that doesn't work, we have fasciotomy, which sounds like lobotomy, but it's taking out part of your fascia. Okay. So they cut the fascia to release the tension to hopefully get rid of the pain. Well, what about the scar tissue that grows in there? And what about the root cause of fasciitis? Now, I did a video on plantar fasciitis a while ago, and I'm just going to read you a few of the uh, comments uh, on this video because I taught them a very counterintuitive technique to get rid of pain from plantar fasciitis, and you just have to hear the results. It'll actually blow you away. And then I'm going to show you how to do this technique. All right, check this out. I've tried everything. I'm sitting on my couch crying because I did all the stretches that I taught her, of course, and feel no heel pain now. I can't remember the last time I could walk without hobbling. All right, next one. Unbelievable pain went from a 10 to a zero next day of doing this. Years of pain. Thank you. Next one. I've had plantar fasciitis for about three months. My pain level was about an eight. When I watched this video, I was a little skeptical because it goes against everything I have watched with nothing to lose. I tried the exercises. My pain has dropped to a one. All right, here's another one. Like many others, I was skeptical. I watched this and tried the exercises. I've had heel pain for over 10 years. There were days I literally crawled around my house on all fours from not being able to put my feet down. After one of these exercises, my heels feel better. I went from an eight to a two. Thank you for going against the trend. How about this one? I did the stretch 10 times while watching your video. My pain vanished. Thank you, Dr. Eric. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do this. Step one, you have to rate your pain from zero to 10. 10 being very severe, zero being no pain. So go ahead and write that down right now because we're gonna re-rate that after this very simple stretch. All right, this is what you need to know. The absolute worst thing you can do is to stretch the fascia, okay? like in stretching your calves. This is what everyone does. This is how they do the splints. They do it in this stretch where your foot is going upwards. I mean, think about it. Here you have this inflamed fascia, which is this connective tissue underneath your foot, right? It's inflamed. Why would you ever want to stretch it more? There's already probably micro trauma going on. And if we're going to stretch it more, we're just going to re-injure it. You never want to stretch with your foot going up, like you're stretching the calf, when you have plantar fasciitis. What you want to do is you want to stretch the opposite muscles. And I'm going to explain why in a minute. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, what I recommend to start out with is just sit with your foot crossed, okay? You're sitting down, just cross your foot and grab your toes, okay? And stretch your foot going downward, okay? So in other words, you're not stretching your calf. You're stretching the muscles on the front part of your shin, that muscle is called the anterior tibialis. So you're stretching your foot down. Okay, you're gonna stretch it, relax it. Stretch it, relax it. Stretch it, relax it. Just do that 10 times right now. Now, as you're stretching, I wanna tell you something. Anytime you have uh, an injury like inflammation underneath your foot and you stretch the opposite muscle, what's gonna happen? You're gonna send uh, signals on the opposite side, because anytime you contract a muscle, there is a circuit that connects this muscle with the opposing muscle. So to allow movement, when we contract one muscle, the opposite muscle must relax and must lengthen or else you couldn't have motion. But as you stretch a muscle, the same thing happens. What you're doing with the stretch is you're sending signals to the bottom of your foot, okay, and your calf to relax. That's all you're doing. All right, so it should be about 10 times right now. Go ahead and write down what your pain rating is right now. If you're doing this correctly, it should have significantly decreased. And please put that in the comment section.
So you want to do this a few times a day, every day for about two weeks. That's the stretch, but there's other things you're going to do as well. All right, let's go to number two. You want to avoid pro-inflammatory foods and things that are considered food, but are really not food. Now, if you take a look at junk food, it's really made out of three things, refined flour, refined sugar, and refined oils. Now they call refined oils, vegetable oils, but they have nothing to do with vegetables. Okay. They're not vegetables. They're seeds, but vegetable oil sounds a lot better. I mean, what are you going to do? Like squeeze a carrot or lettuce and try to pull oil out of there. That's not what happens. What they do with seed oils is to extract oil from the seed. You have to put these seeds under tremendous pressure uh, with solvents like hexane, which can be toxic to your nervous system. And you have to put them under very high heats. So refined flour, refined sugar, and definitely refined grain oils are the culprit to a lot of your inflammation in your body. But the big one that a lot of people do not put emphasis on is the vegetable oils. I'm talking about soy oil, corn oil, canola oil, cottonseed oil. These are highly inflammatory and they create major health problems, not just inflammation. Uh, they lead to gaining weight, obesity. They lead to heart disease. They shorten your life. There's studies that show linking to gaining cancer. So it wasn't very long ago that we switched our fats and our foods, okay? We used to use saturated fats, okay? Like butter, lard, tallow. And now we do all this processed vegetable oils. Now I know what you're saying, you know, you don't use vegetable oils, right? You don't have... Uh, corn oil sitting in your cupboard. But here's the thing, in America, 20% of your calories is coming from these so-called vegetable oils, 20% for an average person. And let me tell you where they're hidden. They're hidden in mayonnaise, salad dressing, any food that's either canned or boxed or processed. They're fed to animals and their animal feeds that you end up eating. And they're in pretty much every single restaurant that you go to. These restaurants do not cook with butter or olive oil. They use soy and corn and canola, unfortunately. So if you're going out to dinner a lot and you feel more plantar fasciitis, then we know why. Now, what happens with these omega-6 fatty acids, which are pro-inflammatory, is they start to replace certain healthy fats inside your cell membranes. In other words, they get lodged in the cells and it creates a situation where it's very, very difficult to get these oils out. It actually takes about four years to detox these oils out of your cells to get them out of your body because they're so locked in to every single cell membrane. So when you switch your diet and start to get rid of these oils and use more saturated fats, whether you're cooking or consuming and butter, uh, coconut oil, avocado is a good oil, and especially olive oil, it's going to take about four years to completely get these oils out of your body. And the amount of oxidation that's occurring because they're very, very fragile in your body is astronomical. It's creating so much free radical damage uh, in its inflammatory process. Not to mention every single one of these oils is GMO, which means they probably have traces of glyphosate, which is an herbicide and traces of hexane, which is another toxin that I'm not gonna get into in this video. But I'm emphasizing this because in practice, I would say 100% of the people coming in with plantar fasciitis were consuming unknowingly a tremendous amount of this oil. And uh, as soon as we made the switch and switched these fats, um, there was significant improvement, uh, not just in inflammation, but in all sorts of health-related issues. All right, the next thing you could do for some quick relief is start taking vitamin D3 if it's the winter. If it's the summer, you go outside, you get a lot of sun because vitamin D3 is one of the most powerful anti-inflammatory. And I wouldn't just take you know, 600 IUs, uh, which is the RDA. I would take minimally 10,000 IUs, but preferably 20,000 IUs. But you're gonna find probably within a few hours that any inflammation in your body, whether it's in the bottom of your foot or your back, is going to start to vanish. All right, and the last thing that creates a lot of inflammation is frequent eating. So I highly recommend you start intermittent fasting and you're gonna find that too is gonna to create a huge effect in your inflammation, not to mention other things like weight, your mood, your cognitive function, and your energy.
Now, for those of you that want the best anti-inflammatory diet, I'm gonna put it right here. There's actually a series or a playlist of a few videos that you need to watch. Check it out, I put it right here.